Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to be going over a rather interesting item and that is Bone Hue. Bone Hue is a whole arm that is rather unique. Uh, it, is a, it is an interesting whole arm to say the least. Um, and we're going to go over it today and I have two different versions of the uh, Bone Hue. I'm also running the ethereal version on uh, my mercenary. And I have the uh, non-ethereal version on me. And uh, first, let's go over the statistics of this particular item. So uh, right off the bat, you see 117 to 609 damage. And uh, if we pull up the ethereal, you'll see that the ethereal version has 176 to 911. So a pretty large difference on damage there between the two versions. But not a lot on the bottom end, because this weapon has a very low bottom end damage, which means the, the, the spread between the damage is going to be very high. The next thing we're going to look at there is the level requirement, which is level 64. It's not bad. Um, it's a rather low level item, but unfortunately when you get to the strength requirement and the dex requirement, you realize, hey, it's actually kind of ridiculous. Um, with a strength requirement of 195 on the non-ethereal version and a strength requirement of 185 on the ethereal version, um, the good luck getting a level 64 mercenary to actually use this item, and good luck using this item on a character, either. So what level could you actually use this item on a mercenary? Um, it's probably going to be somewhere around like level 80, 80 to 90, uh, depending on his equipment, if you have any plus to strength equipment on him. So uh, I would keep that in, um, in retrospect when you're looking at this item. Uh, now, it does have a lot of interesting things, um, and obviously if you have the ethereal, you've got 10 less strength and dex requirement. The dex requirement is next to nothing. Most people have 65 dex, uh, but 185 strength on the ethereal item is still a lot. I'll put that to good use. Uh, we also have a 30% increased attack speed, which is static, so we're going to get that on uh, all the items. Uh, we have a prevent monster heal, which is very, very nice, and uh, unfortunately does not work on mercenaries, so do use. keep that in mind. Uh, prevent monster heal will cause the monsters to not regenerate for 20 minutes, which is a really long time. Um, the enhanced damage varies between 270 to 320 percent, so there's going to be a very large variance uh, between the two. I mean, you're talking about 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100, 100 to 110, 120, so it's about a 50 percent uh, variable between the two. And um, if, especially if you find an ethereal version, uh, the small amount of ED is going to add up to some pretty big numbers on the top end. On top of that, we also have a very interesting effect of 50% chance to cast level 16 Bone Spear on striking. And um, and this is a very interesting effect because it is essentially just raw magic damage being added to your attacks. Um, and at a 50% chance, uh, we are looking at just an amazing amount of piercing damage, which is going to go off like on a regular basis. Um, so we're looking at 154 to 162 bone spear damage, which is magic damage, which is unresistible, by the way. Uh, so most monsters will have no resistance to the bone spear effect. And unfortunately, it does not work on whirlwind. Whirlwind uh, will not proc effects. So we've got to use something like, uh, we'll use uh, bash. And as you can see, uh, the bone spear actually pierces the targets. So when you hit a target um, and the Bone Spear comes out, you will notice that it just pierces straight through to the other side and damages everything on the way. Now, is this damage like the most amazing damage in the world? No, it really isn't. But it is an extra magical damage which pierces through multiple targets and it will proc all the time. With a, uh, a proc chance of 50%, you're going to see it pretty much all the time. Um, especially if it's on a mercenary who uses the jab ability because jab attacks multiple times at one hit and so you're going to see multiple bone spears coming out at any given moment which is pretty darn cool uh, this can also synergize on a necromancer if you put this on a necromancer that has a bone spear ability and uh, and they will get all the synergies from their abilities uh, when they attack this could lead to maybe a melee bone mancer uh, we also have another ability here, which is in the form of charges, and that is level 14, the Corpse Explosion. So, Corpse Explosion is one of the most power uh, powerful abilities, I think, that uh, Necromancer has, 
because it does a massive amount of damage based upon the monster's health, and it doesn't really matter what level the corpse explosion is, it always does 70 to 120% of the monster's health in two forms of damage. 50% of it is physical, and 50% of it is uh, fire. So if a monster is not immune to a physical or fire or both, you can usually kill them with corpse explosion. Uh, it usually takes a couple corpse explosions because the... Um, amount of damage that they do and the resistances that they have come into play so generally around like three to four corpse explosions is usually enough to kill an entire pack of monsters especially if you have something like amp damage running uh, which is uh, which is very nice so on corpse explosion what goes up with the level if not the damage well that's the interesting thing so Corpse Explosion goes up by the radius that the explosion affects, which is rather big. At level 1, it only has a 2.6 yard radius, which is really only a melee range. Um, but at level 14, which is what uh, what this is, we're looking at a 7 yard radius, which means that it is going to hit really far away. Um, and, uh, and believe it or not, this is actually something that you can use in combat. So if I were running around in combat over here, and there were a couple corpses on the ground, I could use these corpses to kill everything nearby. And just like that, everything is dead. And I found a rare jewel. Look at that. It sucks. <laughs> now, the... Charges are probably pretty expensive to uh, repair, so we've used four That's of them so far. So let's take a look at these uh, at the repair cost. So only nine thousand three hundred and thirty four hundred and thirty four to repair those charges. That's not bad at all. So this could theoretically be a very viable weapon for a melee character to not only get um, some decent damage, uh, but also corpse explosions which would uh, assist them in getting kills in large groups of monsters. You could take this into the cow level, for instance, and with a relatively low repair cost, I could see that being uh, pretty useful. Um, in fact, I'll burn all the charges real quick, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll take a look and see what the, da what the uh, damage is on the repair bill. All right, so here we go. I've burned up all the charges on the bone hue, and, uh, and we are at zero. So let's see how much large it charges us to repair the, uh, the bone you might as well sell something so you get a little bit of money. <laughs> so 70,274 to repair the bone you uh, with zero charges. That's actually not bad at all. And quite honestly, I could totally see using that in a cow level uh, sparingly, of course, to soften up the cows specifically for the purpose of, uh, you know, just, just making things faster. If you were running on a melee character, you kill one monster, you use one corpse explosion. That corpse explosion is going to do a massive amount of damage to every cow that's nearby. Because you're a melee character, all the cows are going to be grouped on you, like, uh, you know, just, just like a big hoarding pile. And so the corpse explosion is going to hit all the cows with a seven yard radius. And... If you used two corpse explosions, you could probably kill all the cows in one nice little neat package. Now, of course, the mercenary can't use these. And uh, if you were to grab the ethereal version, of course, the charges wouldn't be repairable. So if you did use the charges on the ethereal version, you wouldn't be able to repair the charges, uh, which is uh, which is a downside. I'll put that to good use. Now, we also have uh, one last effect on this, and that is sockets. So it always comes with two sockets. And this is amazing because you can customize this weapon uh, to your heart's content. Um, you could take shale runes. You could put two shales in here, and you could bring it up by uh, 20, 40%. So 40 plus 30, so it'd be 4, 5, 6, 7. So it'd be 70% increased attack speed, which would be pretty nice. Um, you could also throw in some other items, uh, like maybe you would like some more open wounds. You could throw in an um rune. Uh, maybe you would like some ITD. You could throw in a jaw rune if you've got jaw runes just laying around like candy. Um, <laughs> uh, this, this is offline, guys. Don't, don't get too jealous. This is offline. Um, this is the 25% uh, the open wounds on the um rune. Uh, we also have the... Um, 20% crushing blow from a burr rune, so you could add two burr runes and have 40% crushing blow, which isn't exactly awful. Um, is this weapon optimal for specific builds? I mean, I, I don't really think so. I think it's just a fun weapon. 
Uh, if you put this on a Necromancer, you could spam level 16 Bone Spears. Um, if you put this on a, uh, a Barbarian, you're still going to spam 16 Bone Spears, but there's going to be no synergy. And um, I don't know, just all in all, it's just a very interesting weapon. Um, it would be a lot better if it didn't have such a high level requirement, um, or rather strength requirement. And, and the problem with this is that you can't put this on a Mercenary um, at a low level. So when you take this item um, and you try and put it on a mercenary, it just doesn't work. Um, the other downside to this is that um, for some reason or another, I don't know if it's a, a bug that's been in the game for a really long time, but if you take hell runes and you put them in the weapon, it actually doesn't allow the mercenary to use the item. So say for instance I were to take two hell runes in here and lower the strength requirement to 17. Uh, 117. I could put this in my shared stash. I can go to another character. Someone who's a little bit lower. And um, let's take the Test Druid, who's only level 65. And I believe he's using a um, Act 2 Mercenary. Or maybe he's not. Let's go grab one, shall we? I'll bet. Alright, so uh, we need 64. Now his ear. So here we are at level 64. His strength requirement is 146, and uh, if we take this uh, bone hue that we've got in the stash that we put two hell runes in, I'll put that to good use. You notice that it turns red, so it allows us to put it on him because the hell runes have reduced the strength requirement. But then, when he's actually using it, um, it doesn't actually work. Uh, if you can tell there by the damage, he only has 81 to 98 damage. So he's not actually capable of using it because of the hell runes. The, the, for some reason or another, hell runes don't work on mercenaries, and I've never really figured out why. Uh, it will work on characters, but uh, but that's another story. I actually don't have enough strength. I actually don't have enough strength. That's, uh, that's funny. Now... <laughs> If you found this item um, and you didn't understand what its value was, I mean, it's certainly understandable. It's it's a very odd item. And I feel like a lot of people look at this item and are probably like, what is this item actually used for? They they probably look at it and, and try to put it on their mercenary, and they can't because of the 195 strength requirement. Um, by the time you get a mercenary that has a high enough strength requirement to utilize this, I feel like you've usually got a better weapon laying around. And um, the unique effects on it are certainly interesting, but they don't really seem like something that I would build a character around. The other, th the other interesting thing with this weapon is that um, it does have a range of three, which is uh, pretty nice for a polearm. Um, unfortunately, the range doesn't really matter for mercenaries, but if you were to use this on, say, a polearm barbarian or a um, <laughs> a melee bone mancer, um, the range would definitely be a nice boon. Uh, the jewels that you could put in here and the gems that you could put in here is is kind of endless. Um, I mean, you could just throw two shields in this, and you could use it on a uh, on a, a shape shifting druid for a uh, a placeholder weapon. But I, uh, I, I still I feel like the uh, 195 strength requirement is a big detriment there. It's a lot like a uh, Colossus Volge. You know, Colossus Volge has, has 210 strength requirement. And uh, and even when it's F, it's 200. And it's still just a little bit too high to put on a mercenary. Usually people have to uh, take equipment uh, specifically to um, to try and find this. Like, it's not something that you could just be like, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's uh, how I could put this on my mercenary. Like, no, you've got to have, like, a... a a giant skull with two sockets and throw perfect amethyst in there so that you can uh, actually allow your mercenary to use this kind of thing. Where would you find this particular item? Um, the Ogre Axe as well as the Bone Hue. It's a, a TC class of, of 60, which is, uh, which is really, really low. Uh, the Bone Hue is, I suppose, set up specifically for that level 64 requirement. So uh, at a TC class 60, you can find this anywhere in Hell Difficulty. And in fact, you can find this uh, in quite a few places in Nightmare Difficulty, I believe. And just a cursory look at the list, uh, looking here, um, quite a few places in Hell Difficulty in Act 5 are actually level 60 or higher zones. Uh, there are a couple zones that are lower than level 60, but for the most part, uh, just about every zone in Act 5 is actually 
level 60 or higher, with exception to uh, Frigid Highlands and Bloody Foothills. They're a little bit lower. But, um, you know, Worldstone Keep is 65. Ariat Summit is 68. Icy Cellar is 62. Uh, Halls of Vaught, 64. Uh, every single one of these should technically be able to drop the bone here. So, so you're looking at everywhere from Act 5 Nightmare all the way up to Act 5 Hell um, are, are going to be able to drop this particular item. Um, so if you're looking for it specifically for those corpse explosion charges, or maybe you want to put it on a mercenary, or uh, maybe you want to play around with the bone spear on striking effect, um, that's where you can find it. Um, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, and uh, I hope to bring you a whole lot more unique item videos in the future, so keep watching. Because you got more.